everybody. Thanks for joining me for our live this Friday afternoon. Um, as always, I'm going to get on so I can see your questions. So just bear with me for a second while I get on so I can see uh, the live feed and answer your questions today. Um, so nice to see you all virtually. Uh, please say hello. Tell me where you're from as I'm getting this all up and going. And I would love to see all of your questions, all of the things that you want to know today. You can just jump in the feed, tell me where you're at, where you're from. Um, just got done recording a live interview from uh, for Dr. Ingalls Masterclass, which is coming up on mold. So you'll have to stay tuned for that. You'll get to see my interview um, with him. And if you haven't heard yet, we are in the process of filming a documentary on environmental toxicity and mold. So all of your questions from that um, would be welcome. Any sort of things on environmental toxicity, mold related illness, um, anything along those lines is a fair game. Okay, and I see that we're here. It looks like I've got, hi Blake from Iowa. Awesome, great to see you. And um, so yeah, come say hello. Uh, let me know where you're from. Let me know what questions you have. Um, mold, gosh, how many of you are struggling with mold related illness? Jump in, uh, tell me who you are, where you're from, um, what kind of struggles you've had, what kind of questions. Hi, Dixie from Florida. Can I take glutathione if I have mercury in my mouth? Um, so that's a great question because often we won't do a lot of challenge testing if someone has mercury, because we don't want to disturb that. Usually I don't give DMSA or EDTA if someone has a lot of mercury in their mouth. Glutathione, however, I feel fairly different as unless you have a reaction to glutathione, um, you should be able to still take that. However, as you probably know from asking, the ideal thing would be to find a biological dentist and get the mercury out of your mouth. Again, I'm sure you know that sometimes it's expense or time or other things that make it difficult. And I actually would not recommend um, doing it if you don't have a good biological dentist, because if you start to disturb the mercury without the proper containment, um, you could make a bad situation worse. I know because I had lots of mercury in my mouth 20 years ago and I went to a dentist and I don't know that he did all the best job. Um, so far, I, I'm doing okay because I've done a lot of mercury detox, but um, you really want to have someone who does the bridge and kind of containment um, with that. Dental issues are a whole nother issue, Dixie. I wonder if you um, are in the process of trying to find someone to do that, or if any of you listening have dental issues you have questions about. I am not a dentist, but I realize how critical this is to our immune systems. So if you have any dental questions, ask away and I'll do my best to answer or refer you to someone who might have a better answer. Hi, Eric from Arizona. Awesome, thanks for joining us. Um, so I will just talk a little bit about mold, uh, one of my favorite topics, and then I will just be watching the comments here. So please jump in, add your questions. I will be sure and answer as many as I can in the next half hour or so. Dixie, what glutathione do you recommend with filling still in place? Um, I will um, also go in and try to put some links in to recommendations. Um, there is a couple options. There is a versions of s glutathione. There are um, liposomal versions of glutathione. Uh, and we have our own glutathione essentials. They're really great. It's a capsule that works um, very well, highly absorbable. I really like that one because um, it's a capsule versus a liquid or gel. Some of the other gels that are good are the Quicksilver brand is great. Um, Research Nutritionals has a good brand that's watermelon flavored. So I just put that link in there if you guys want to see more about that. Hey, Mark from Canada. Awesome. Hi, Susan. Great to see you. Um, and Blake, are there resources or supplements you recommend for someone who has had issues with mold and having COVID long haul? Okay, well, let's just do this. Blake, that's a great question to get us started. Let's kind of talk about like, what do you do when you get mold exposure and how do you really start addressing these things? So it's funny because I just got done doing a recorded lecture, like I said, so I was talking about this last hour and... Um, Let's start with exposure. So first of all, if you have mold in your home or your workplace, or your environment, um, no amount of glutathione or treatment or IVs is going to really take care of that if you're continually getting a massive exposure. Now, what you can do is lower your toxic load over time so that you become more and more resilient and less sensitive to mold, which is the ideal, but you really have to get rid of the um, environmental exposure. And thank you, Sue, for adding that mercury from the, so the IA, 
sorry, IAOMT. That's an organization that certifies biological dentists. So thank you, Sue, for sharing that. It's in the chat box because that's a great organization if you um, want to find a biological dentist. And thank you, Dixie, for your thank you. Hi, Donald. So back to Blake's question on mold. So environmental exposure, you got to get out of the exposure. And then you've got to help this detox pathways. With mold, we always have... Um, basically mobilization of the toxins and excretion. And if you mobilize too quickly, but you're not excreting, you get into trouble. Some of you probably, if you were out there in the audience, you could raise your hand and say, yeah, I know what that feels like. I do too. I remember after my mold exposure, I took activated charcoal and I was just like, oh, I'm going to get rid of this mold and take a lot of charcoal. And I had hives head to toe for probably four to six weeks or longer because I was pushing the toxins out of my body at too quick of a rate. And I was actually getting, um, Basically, I was getting, um, what do you call it, Re uh, action, you know, uh, uh, reaction to those mycotoxins as they tried to go out of my body. So that was definitely not a good idea. I do not recommend going too quickly um, and pushing yourself so that you're mobilizing quicker than you can excrete. That's really, really important. So sometimes we think more is better. Not true, because you can do collateral damage as you push too hard. So um, things that increase glutathione are helpful. That can be anything from N-acetylcysteine. Um, lipoic acid, selenium, ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, glycine, glutamine. These are all um, precursors uh, of N-acetylcysteine. Basically glycine, um, glutamine, and N-acetylcysteine or cysteine are the backbones of glutathione. So you need all of those amino acids in order to make glutathione. And if you're someone like me who doesn't tolerate glutathione very well, um, it's often good to do precursors instead. So in the beginning, I couldn't take glutathione. Now I can. In fact, this afternoon I was with a friend and getting an IV and I got IV Myers cocktail, which is a B vitamins, calcium, magnesium. I added a little extra zinc. And I also got a push of two grams of glutathione afterwards. So I literally just today got a boost IV of glutathione. Now I'm not in any particular problem today. It was just, it happened to be in a location where I could get the IV. Um, and that's a great option if you have access to, to that, where you can get some B vitamins and glutathione IV. So you can also take glutathione. And like I said, I put one in the chat box here of a brand I like, but there's many others out there and that will help your body to mobilize toxins. Now, other things that can mobilize toxins are infrared sauna, coffee enemas, Epsom salt baths, one of my favorite things, but many, many ways that you can use to mobilize toxins. Um, in addition, you're gonna to wanna to support the liver. So things like DIM and alpha lipoic acid and milk thistle and N-acetylcysteine are all supportive for the, for the liver. Um, and then making sure that gallbladder is excreting. So things like Tudka and bitters and just um, digestive enzymes with your meals are really important. And all of those things will allow the body to take the liver, detoxify the chemicals and mycotoxins, excrete them in the bile. And then the binders come in in the gut because they will bind those toxins in the bile and escort them out through the stool. So binders that we use are clay and charcoal and zeolite and glycomannans. And there's many, many binders. My favorite is just plain old activated charcoal. Um, I will send you a link to that as well, because um, gosh, there's all kinds of wonderful brands, but um, I'll put one of my favorites down here because it's simple to use. It works well. And I will also share, you might not hear a lot of MDs talk about coffee enemas, but it's such a wonderful thing I learned in Switzerland. And I learned the power of that to enhance the production of your own glutathione. So basically when you do a coffee enema, that enterohepatic circulation from your colon to your liver enhances your own body's production of glutathione. And many, many patients tend to feel a lot better when they're doing coffee enemas once a week, twice a week. Um, you should feel better, not worse, but that's another way to enhance glutathione production through the liver and actually support your liver and gallbladder. Uh, a lot of us don't have good bile acid production or we have sluggish bile. And that can also be a problem because the bile is the um, holding substance for your toxic load. So getting that bile acid secretion is really critical in detoxification. So that's just in a nutshell. There's so much more, but I'll go back to questions. Um, hi, Ivy. How do you treat hormone irregularities in women as a result of mold and toxin exposure? Um, great question, because you've probably heard me talk about before. Um, aromatase is an enzyme that's upregulated in mold exposure. And in both men and women, what this does is it steals from your testosterone, which makes muscles, helps you keep strong and healthy and motivated. Um, and it steals from that and creates more estrogens. 
And while we need a balance of all of these things, if you have excess estrogen production, you can often have endometriosis, you can have fibroids, you can have tender cystic breast, you can have heavy, painful periods. Um, men can have man boobs and weight gain around the middle and lack of libido. So this sounding familiar to anybody, um, super common and super common with mold exposure. So uh, I think it's a, Ivy's question is, what do you do? Well, you have to treat that imbalance and downregulate aromatase because if you just give testosterone, um, it will go down that same pathway and make more problems with estrogen. So you can actually make a bad problem worse by just treating hormonally with excess testosterone because you're going to just go down that pathway. So I like to use DIM. Um, I like to use I3C calcium deglucurate, um, sulforaphanes like broccoli, broccoli boost, bro broccoli sprouts. I'll put um, a couple of those on here too for a fane because that is just such a powerful thing. One of my new favorites is our Broco Boost. Love this. It has anti-cancer benefits. It's a it's basically a sulforaphane, super powerful. One cap is equivalent to about two pounds of broccoli sprouts. So granted, I love food. If you can eat broccoli sprouts, it's a great way to get it, but it's kind of nice to have a cap that has such a powerful ability to help your detox. And then, like I said, calcium deglucurate, super powerful for a pathway called glucuronidation. And I'm going to put that in here too. So you know what I'm talking about. Uh, glucuronidation is phase three of the, I'm sorry, phase two of the liver. So it helps us process out those toxins through the liver. And then of course, N-acetylcysteine, glutathione, which I already mentioned, um, milk thistles, another big one. I'm just going to pop these all in here. So if you guys wonder what I'm talking about, you can go right and look at the ingredients on that. And the last one, silymarin, which is another name for milk thistle. Um, also an absolutely wonderful liver support. I've probably been on silymarin 20 years because I had breast cancer 20 years ago and I started taking it that long ago. Hi, Eric, what can my wife and I do to maintain our immune system until we get out of our um, out of it? That means mold, I'm sure, on a tight budget. Oh, first of all, Eric, I thank you for sharing that. This is so common. Um, I had a friend who just is dealing with mold and he got the estimate for the remediation. And as you can well imagine, eight to $10,000 is not uncommon. And I just, oh, my heart sank because I know how expensive and difficult this can be. And not everyone has a choice to move or to get out right away. So first of all, true compassion for you and for anyone else suffering out there, because this is hard stuff and it's your home that should be a place of safety. So what I recommend is if you can afford an air filter, that will help lower the mycotoxin load in the air, the VOCs. I love Austin Air and I became a dealer just so we could give discounts. So if you ever need that, you can call our office um, and get an Austin Air shipped right to you. There's great other brands like IQ Air. Um, some of the ones like Molecule and there's a few other brands out there are fantastic and they can actually help remediate the air. However, um, they can react to the, to the uh, toxins in the air and create an ozone-like substance. And there's some people like myself that whose lungs are a little sensitive to that. So I'm also really careful about those types of air filters. Um, I know the Austin Air and the IQ Air do not. They're great filtration systems, but they don't cause any irritants to the lungs. So I'm a little bit more cautious because me personally, I did not do well with those types of air filters when I was sick. So air filter and then dilution is the solution to pollution. So just opening your windows or getting some air circulation from the outside and diluting that effect will also give you some relief until you can get out of the house or remediate or whatever. Hi, Stephanie, what would you suggest for chronic MCAS if you're salicylate intolerant and can't tolerate quercetin? Um, so there's actually a lot of ways, a lot of reasons why people can't tolerate quercetin. I'm one of those too. If you have a COMT double mutation, um, often that will cause increase in estrogens because that COMT enzyme detoxifies stress hormones and estrogens and quercetin will block that enzyme. And I've had this before when I took too much quercetin, I might get breast tenderness because the estrogens were too high, or I might get like, I'm not usually an anxious person, but when your norepinephrine, epinephrine is not being broken down, you can feel a little bit more anxious. And if I take too much quercetin, I can feel that stress hormones that aren't getting broken down. Um, so what would I recommend instead? Well, there's lots of other ways to treat mast cell activation besides quercetin. There's stinging nettles. There is um, Chinese skull cap. There is um, the, um, let's see, Perella seed is a great one. And there's things like Neuroprotec. And there are combinations that don't include quercetin. Um, I also like uh, the antihistamines, H1 and H2 blockers, um, catodifin, um, monoleucus. These are all mast cell stabilizers. So there's really lots and lots of pathways you can use without quercetin. 
Hi, Missy. Uh, which CoQ10 do you recommend? I believe there's three to choose from. Um, I will show you my very favorite. Um, and you're right. There's so many different variations and they all say they're the best, right? <laughs> well, I will tell you this. I think they're all good. So you can't really go wrong. Um, we have an activated CoQ10 that I really like. It's a highly bioavailable CoQ10. I'll put that link in here too. Um, but on the other hand, there is also um, MitoQ, which is a PQQ type of derivative. And I'm going to see if I can find a link to that because I'm a huge fan of the, um, I'm sorry, not the MitoPQQ. It's called um, MitoQ. Let me see if I can find this for you here. Um, and our PQQ, because these are other options that are really good too. Um, one of the things, so I'm going to put this one that has CoQ10 and PQQ together in it. So you can see that PQQ is a little bit more active form. Um, I love CoQ10 by itself. If I had to choose just for cost, I would choose CoQ10 alone, um, which is the activated CoQ10. Um, but the PQQ is amazing. So it's a little more expensive, um, but you'll still get good benefit just from CoQ10. Um, CoQ10 is a precursor to help cellular energy and mitochondria. So really, really important for energy, for brain, for mitochondria and it's depleted. Now, you didn't mention this in your question, but NAD, NAD is a powerhouse and mold depletes NAD. NAD is one of the things that helps you recycle glutathione and helps as a precursor of glutathione. I'm sorry, not a precursor, a precursor of ATP. ATP is your cellular energy. So really, really critical is getting that NAD. But just like anything, like I mentioned with glutathione, um, one of the things that happens a lot of times is if you start to push things too quickly, um, you're going to have trouble because you're pushing toxins more quickly than you can excrete them. So all these products and things that you might want to do, go slowly, please. I've done this myself where I go way too quickly and I get toxic and I get more sick. So please, if you're not doing well, back up on your protocol, go more slowly. Uh, be, I always say this, this is actually really important. Be kind to yourself. So often we push and we want to get well better and we, we kind of beat ourselves up and that be kind to yourself includes taking it slow, taking it easy, taking it at a pace that your body can handle. So I always love talking about that. Okay, so let's go back to questions. There's so many great questions here. And like I said, I'm trying to pop in and as I talk about products, share those in there too. Okay, so um, hi, Olden from Chicago. Um, thank you, Blake, for thanking me for the information. Let's see, we talked about CoQ10 from Missy. Um, oh yeah, and Missy X2 ask too, if she's on a statin drug, absolutely statins will inhibit production of CoQ10. So I'm not opposed to statins. There's a perfectly appropriate place to use them. But if you're on a statin drug, you wanna be sure and um, take that CoQ10, that activated CoQ10 I mentioned, really, really important. Hi, Joelle. Um, what if you have MTHFR gene and have slower detox pathways? So this is super common. About one third of patients have at least one copy. And MTHFRs are involved in methylation. There's a lot of other genes that involve in that. What you want to do is make sure you have a methylated B complex. So at least something that has, and again, I'll put the, uh, the note in here as, as we go of what that might be because I like the activated uh, B-complex for that because it has methylated forms and most good brands are gonna have that nice methylated form there. These are great questions. I always have so much fun with y'all. <laughs> um, we talked about hormone regulators. We talked about detox. We talked about methylated. Hi, Jennifer. Great to see you again. Um, I already started DNRS a while ago, but what program is your favorite? Oh, this is great. Limbic system activation. Now I'm going to pop on the website and share with you guys an article on limbic system that I wrote that has lots of great tips in there. Um, so I'm looking that up as we go. If you see me looking off the camera, um, because this is so critical. Great, great question, Jennifer. So, so important. Um, so there's two big programs out there and there's a lot of other things you can do. Um, there's the Gupta program and then there's Annie Hopper's DNRS program. Um, and I will find, I don't see that link right immediately for the limbic system, but I will be sure and add that in. I think I actually have a handout that I can put in the chat box or put a link to that. So I will follow up with that. Um, but I, it really depends on the person. They're both great programs and I've had success with both of them. Um, some people don't resonate. This is stuff that you have to have try to reprogram your thinking and thought around trauma and around limbic activation. And it's really helpful, but what you need to find is a program that resonates with you. And like I said, there's 
Gupta, G-U-P-T-A, Program on Limbic System. And then there's Annie Hopper's DNRS. Those are two common ones that a lot of us doctors recommend. Um, Stephen Porges, P-O-R-G-E-S, has a safe and sound protocol that can be helpful as well. And I'm a big fan of things like cranial sacral therapy, biurinal beats, um, which is a type of music that has different hertz in each ears, um, even types of breathing, um, anything you can do to downregulate limbic activation. EMDR, um, somatic-based therapies. Um, there's some books that are really good, retraining your brain. So all of these things can be helpful and all of them are part of healing from mold toxicity. Uh, okay, so let's keep going here. Dixie, what can I take to sleep besides Benadryl? Um, so do not want to develop the tell. So any sort of antihistamine can be really helpful for sleep. Um, but I also like things like 5-HTP, um, tryptophan, GABA, G-A-B-A, -A, um, things like valerian, um, even CBD can be helpful. And I often just start with magnesium glycinate, which is a precursor of glycine, of course, and that will help um, to create more GABA. So magnesium, we're almost all deficient. So a, a good magnesium glycinate is a great way to start as well. So those are all some tips. Um, we have something called sleep essentials that has a lot of those all in one. So that's probably our best seller for sleep is it's called sleep essentials. Um, I'll try to find the link for that too, but that's a great one that you can use for your sleep. Um, so we talked about that. Links. Hi, Laura. Do you see high androgens in general with mold exposure or even high testosterone in women? Is that typical? Same treatment, DIM, BRCA boost, et cetera. So great question, Laura, because it's a little less common to see high testosterone versus low testosterone. I would say it's um, uh, it's possible, but especially if someone has underlying PCOS or issues with testosterone, um, but it, it can happen. And the high testosterone can cause acne, breakouts, irritability, excessive hair growth in women. Um, with that, I would actually use something more like saw palmetto or uh, nettles or pumpkin. Um, there's some products. Uh, one is called a prostate supreme. Um, this is a great product that combines a lot of these things together and helps to lower that testosterone in women. Um, the funny thing is it's called Prostate Supreme and you're probably giggling now because why would I recommend that in women? Well, the product is made for men with high testosterone or DHT and hair loss or prostate issues, but the same pathways apply in women. So I actually use a product called Prostate Supreme, laugh at me if you want, in women because the, the stuff that's in there is really great. Um, we also have one that's called DIM Plus, really, really good combination of DIM and uh, calcium deglucrate and all of the things that will lower, naturally lower both estro excessive estrogen and also excessive testosterone. So just great, great questions here. Oh my gosh. Okay. Just a few more minutes. Let's see what else we have here. Um, and thank you guys for thanking me. That's so kind. Um, I really do enjoy this. Uh, hi, Elise, what causes burning tongue? Oh, great, great question. Anyone else have burning tongue, burning mouth, even a vulvodynia, which is burning vaginal area for women, any muco mucosal membrane can have this. Often this is related to histamine or oxalates. So oxalates are something that are produced by mold or by yeast. And if you have excessive oxalates, they're like little shards of glass in your tissues. So they can cause a lot of pain and inflammation. They can cause joint pain. They can cause burning in different tissues, even bladder pain but they can definitely cause burning mouth pain. And some menopausal women are hormone deficient and they'll have the burning mouth just from that as well. So um, complex, you have to deal with the oxalates, which is usually dealing with the mold and fungal issues. Um, sometimes lowering your oxalate load in food can also help with that. Elise, that's a great question. Okay, Eric, thank you for your comments. Dixie, where am I located? I'm in Boulder, Colorado, actually Louisville, which is right next door to Boulder. Um, and so it is a beautiful um, dry climate, although we have a lot of mold from the um, floods in Boulder. Hi, Dawn, great to see you here. What higher dose mat do you prefer um, versus the Biomat? So um, interestingly, I had tried the Biomat years ago and I have a friend who has a, a mat that's PEMF that was extremely expensive. I don't know, in the 10 or $20,000 range, <laughs> crazy. And so I always was like, oh, this is out of the range of most people to afford it. And I never really looked into it. And then you guys have heard me talk about higher dose. <laughs> you know, I love my mat. And um, if you haven't seen it, um, it's right here. Actually, my puppies have messed up the blanket. There's one of the puppies sitting there. If you can see that on the floor, I have a nice blanket and pillow there. Um, but Ravi, my little puppy, sometimes they'll lay in the mat. And I love that mat. I use it every single day. Um, I'm a huge fan. And so I hope you don't get me tired of 
get tired of hearing me talk about it, but I love it because it really, really works. And it's helped me a lot. The things that I noticed were I have a aura ring to track my sleep and the amount of deep sleep I would get um, from that uh, when using level one at 20 minutes before bed was really like I could see statistically the different on my ring, my aura ring. And what I would get is I would get less total hours of sleep sometimes, but I would still get the same or more deep sleep. So what it happened was I could feel, wake up feeling refreshed after say six, six and a half hours instead of seven, seven and a half hours. It was pretty profound. The other thing that helped was energy and focus and concentration. So there's different levels and the level three is more of a brain wave, like alpha wave equivalent. And that was super helpful. And then level four is really good for healing and energy. And I use it every day. I love it. In fact, I have a travel version that sits on my chair at work. So if I'm in the office, I can use it um, there as well. So I will put a link, um, this link to products we love has all the kinds of stuff that I like there. And there's a link there to the hired us mat. And I do have a discount coupon if you're interested um, for $75 off any purchase. So thanks for asking that, Matt. Um, the materials, so these are actually very low um, toxicity. They have mm -hmm. crystals, amethyst, and charcoal in the mat, so it accentuates. It not only has the PEMF, which is pulsed electromagnetic frequency, but it also has um, negative ions. It'd be like after a rainstorm or walking barefoot on the beach. So those are the kind of things when you feel really good and energized. And it has infrared heat. So love it, love it. Can't say enough about it. Um, hi, Mark. What do you recommend for dealing with extreme anxiety? Oh, first of all, Mark, I'm sorry. I don't know if it's you or someone you know, um, but that's a tough thing because I often say to patients, you know, sometimes these infections or toxins create more anxiety or depression or mood. And you kind of know this isn't me, right? Like you, you know what's you and what your natural tendency is. And sometimes we all have anxiety or depression, but sometimes these infections uh, or toxins can create a lot more than we're used to. And we know intuitively it's really not us. It's, you know, this infection. So what do you do? So I love theanine. L-theanine is a great amino acid that will kind of calm alert state, bring more of those alpha waves. The mat would help with this, the PEMF mat. Um, other things would be GABA, super helpful. CBD would be very helpful. Um, benzodiazepines are prescription. They can be habit forming, but sometimes temporarily they can be effective as well if needed. Um, thank you, Dixie. Appreciate that. Um, Let's see, I'm gonna do just a couple more questions, but these are so great. Um, EL says, according to your experience, what deficiencies SNPs prevent patients from overcoming Bartonella and Borrelia? Oh gosh, um, I wish I had an easy answer to that. There's thousands and thousands and I look at the individual. So I'm not trying to evade your question, but that's a really hard one to answer because I would look at one person and I would point out the ones in their profile, but out of thousands and thousands of options, it's hard to list which ones because there's not like one size fits all. And there's not like one gene that really definitely causes worsening. But I would say anything with the glutathione or detoxification or ability to handle toxic load, um, anything where there's upregulation of IL-6, IL-2, TNF-alpha, those kinds of genetic SNPs would be problems with um, mold. Okay. Hi, Dixie. Uh, frequency in urination mold related? Yes, 100%. Mold will affect antidiuretic hormone and cause increased thirst and frequency of urination. So definitely. And any supplements to treat? Well, I usually start with just plain old electrolytes. Um, and you want to have something with it, um, either one-to-one -one ratio of sodium to, to, to potassium. Um, but just electrolytes can help. And there are some medications like vasopressin that can help as well. Um, Thank you, Dawn, for your beautiful, thank you to me. I appreciate you so much and your beautiful words. Um, hi, Sue, Di recent friend diagnosed with Lyme disease on Doxy, needs gut and immune support. Um, do you have a link to your functional medicine protocol for Lyme? Um, oh, Sue, I wish I did. Um, you know what, I don't, I don't have a protocol and I don't generally have protocols because I talk to the patients and in very individualized the protocols. So I literally talk to them, get their history, do the labs, and then create a unique protocol for every single person. So um, not that there isn't great protocols out there, but I'm not one who writes protocols because every single patient I treat, I treat differently according to what they need. 
Hi, Mark. Thank you. Oh, thank you for your kind words. Um, oh, Jennifer, I love it. The higher dose mat rocks. I know, right? Like we keep talking about it because all my staff have it, my a lot of my patients. It really is. It's tremendous. And I know you're, like I said, you probably get so sick of me talking about it. I literally come from a place of it's changed my life. I, I've done all kinds. I have red light therapy. I have saunas. I have um, the V light, um, but the higher dose mat has been for me, the biggest change for my immune system and my sleep. Um, awesome, everyone. This has been so fun again today. Thank you for joining with me. Um, I plan to be back every month and I'm also going to go to Instagram live as well. So if you are not following me on Instagram, please go over and just hit a follow because I will be doing these probably even more frequently. I just did one with Dave Asprey, the biohacking expert. So if you haven't seen me on there, you can either go to Dave's feed or you can go to um, my feed and see the Instagram lives. It's just Dr. Jill Carney. And um, thank you all. I uh, so appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.